welcome to the art of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. This series will start off by introducing the very basics of the game, and get more and more advanced as we go on. This specific video is catered towards beginners. Let's get right into it. All characters can run to the left and right by quickly tapping the control stick. Some characters are obviously faster than others. Tilt the control stick lightly and you'll walk instead of running. Some characters will walk faster than others. The slower and gentler you move the control stick, the slower the character will move. All characters can duck, and some characters can even crawl. You cannot run past an opponent. You are also able to quickly tap yourself to the left and right. Once you start running for too long, however, and tap yourself to the other direction, you'll get this turnaround animation. This is a slow animation that you'll want to avoid. To do so, make sure you release the control stick first to stop, before tapping yourself to the other direction. This movement is very important to master and get very comfortable with, in order to keep up with the opponent and make them guess what'll come next. Frames are very important in Smash. This game runs at 60 frames per second, so 30 frames is half a second and 15 frames is a quarter of a second. Understanding and knowing the speed of each move helps a lot. One thing to keep in mind is that frames might change as patches come and go. All characters have two types of jumps, a full hop and a short hop. You full hop by holding the jump button and short hop by pressing the jump button and quickly releasing it, basically tapping it really quickly. Every character's jump squad is frame 3, meaning it takes 3 frames until the opponent is airborne. All characters can also do a double jump in midair. Once you've used it, you won't be able to get it back unless you touch the ground or grab the ledge. Some characters have multiple double jumps, which have less height than a regular one. While airborne, you can force your character to land quicker than normal by tapping the control stick down when the character reaches the peak of its jump. When you see this flash, it means you've successfully fast fallen. This is extremely useful and will greatly increase the speed of your gameplay. Every character has the same amount of durability on their shield. If you keep shielding, it'll get smaller and smaller. You can tilt the shield by gently moving the control stick, or by holding shield and B at the same time, then moving the control stick however you want. By shielding, you can block almost all attacks, and so instead, the shield will take damage depending on what move you block and get smaller. When you aren't shielding, it will gradually regenerate over time. If it takes too much damage, it'll break and leave you stunned. You can do a perfect shield, which is also referred to as a parry, by releasing the shield button just before something is about to hit you. This won't hurt your shield at all, will nullify the attack, and will give you more time to punish the opponent. During the parry animation, you can use any attack, jump, or run and grab them. This is a risky option to go for because as soon as you release the button, you have 5 frames to parry. If you do parry, however, you will be rewarded with 3 frames extra to punish the opponent. While shielding, you can roll by tapping the control stick to the left or right. And if you tap the control stick down, you will spot dodge. Rolling and spot dodging are mainly for avoiding dangerous situations and rarely mixing up your positioning. If you keep using your dodge and roll, they will become slower and more vulnerable, so use them wisely. All characters have a neutral air dodge and a directional air dodge. The neutral air dodge is done by inputting shield in the air while the control stick is set to neutral position. This air dodge is risky as after you've dodged, you'll be vulnerable to attacks for a short time. Directional air dodge is done by shielding in the air while holding a certain direction. This kind of air dodge is even riskier as you will be vulnerable to attacks for a very long time. You can only do one air dodge while airborne. If you get hit, you'll be able to use it again. You will also suffer lag if you land with an air dodge. However, the more time you've had to land, the less landing lag you will have. Air dodging is definitely necessary to try avoiding attacks, but should be used cautiously. 
A grab will counter a shield, although a spot dodge counters a grab. Some characters have close range grabs, while some have long range grabs, which can be more punishable if avoided. Once you've grabbed an opponent, you can pummel or throw them up, down, in front, or behind. Each throw have their own purpose depending on character. While grounded, you can jab by pressing A. If you tap the control stick so that the character starts running, then press A, you will perform a dash attack. If you gently tilt the control stick and press A, you'll perform a tilt. This works in all directions. On some characters, the forward tilt can be tilted upwards and downwards. By simultaneously smashing the control stick and pressing A, you will perform a smash attack. You can charge up the smash attacks by holding the A button. And on some characters, the forward smash can also be tilted upwards or downwards. This works in all directions. So in conclusion, you can jab, dash attack, tilt, and smash attack. Every character has 5 different aerial attacks, depending on which way you direct the control stick while airborne. If you press A without holding any direction, you will perform a neutral air. And by holding a direction, you can do an up air, forward air, down air, and back air. Most characters have 4 special moves that are performed by holding a direction and pressing B. Neutral B, Side B, Up B, and Down B. Instead of health bars, the players have percentage. Each attack deals a different amount of percentage. The more percentage the opponent has, the further they will get launched. The basic objective is to build up percentage and then launch the opponent as far as possible to score a kill. Rage means that the higher percentage you have, the further your attacks will launch the opponent by a slight amount. Every character has a certain way of recovering back to stage. You have double jumps and the up special, which is the most standard. However, some characters might be able to recover with other special moves. You can even use your directional air dodge as a mix-up to recover back to stage or to the ledge. Characters with long-range grabs can also recover by pressing the grab button at the right distance. These can also be used offensively on the opponent, and are referred to as a Zare. When you're hanging on the ledge, there are five different options to come back to stage. Regular get up, which is done by tilting the control stick towards the stage, having only one frame of vulnerability before you can shield. Attack, which can be done by attacking, giving you invulnerability during the attack. Jump, which is done by jumping or by tilting the control stick upwards, making you vulnerable at the very start but allows you to act a moment after. Roll can be performed by pressing the shield button, which makes you invulnerable halfway in. And lastly, you can tilt the control stick away or down as you double jump and get back onto stage. This should be combined with an attack for a potent comeback. Almost half of all the characters can wall jump. Wall jumping is performed by jumping towards a wall and then tapping the control stick to the opposite direction of the wall. Lucario, Greninja, Sheik, and other characters can wall cling by jumping towards a wall, which will automatically cling you for a period of time. If you get launched and want to recover quickly, you can perform a tech. Teching is done by pressing shield or grab just before you touch the ground. This will grant you a tiny bit of intangibility. You can also tech roll to the left or right. If you miss a tech, you will just land on the ground, which makes you vulnerable to attacks. If you're close to the ground, you can also choose to air dodge downwards towards the ground, which will automatically make you tech. Careful you do not land with an air dodge, however as if you land with an air dodge, you will be even more vulnerable to attacks. This still allows you to tech to the left or right. If you didn't tech and you're lying on the ground, you can still roll in any direction, stand up, or do a get-up attack. Teching is also very useful for when you get launched under and towards the stage. You can do a simple tech, 
or a jump tech by pressing jump at the same time as you tech, or by holding the control stick upwards as you tech. You can jump on all of the opponent's heads, which is referred to as a footstool. You can do a short footstool and a long footstool, depending on how long you hold the jump button. This can be used to send the opponent downwards as they try to recover with a double jump. If you do it on stage, the footstool can be teched. It can also be used as an additional landing option, or as a rare option to get back from the ledge. After a footstool, you still have your double jump left. Unless of course you've double jumped first, then footstooled. You can taunt with the D-pad, which can be cancelled halfway with anything. Use these to aggravate and bait your opponent. These are the very basics of Smash that you should know about if you are about to pick up the game. The best characters to pick up as a beginner are Mario, Ike, Palutena, Captain Falcon, Lucina, or Kirby, as they are very simple and will teach you the game rather than having a focus on character specifics. Start by learning and mastering all of these steps, and then proceed to the next video. The second part will cover more advanced stuff. You should also check out the art of the series, if you want to learn everything about a specific character. These videos go extremely in depth about what every character can do in the game. So if you want to learn how to play or beat a certain character, I would recommend watching these videos. You could also contact me on Discord for a private session where I could teach you anything about the game and coach you to becoming the best player that you can be. Before you click off this video, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell to be notified on all the upcoming videos.